Sold this Domino's women's employee polo shirt for 15 bucks on Poshmark. Buyers pay about seven and a half bucks shipping on top of that. Would not pick these up at retail, but would pick them up at the bins. Pretty powerful brand, Spanx. Mentioned this in the last video, this is one of the few women's brands I know of that'll just pick up anything from the brand and it all sells. That's Spanx with an X. These actually had a big tear right in the waist, still flip for 13 bucks. Got these at the bins as well. The brand is Old Navy, which is definitely an ass brand, but linen blend and kind of this lounge pant type thing. And we're going into linen season more and more, and I really like flipping linen, even from kind of bad brands around this time of year. Got this at a little boutique uh, thrift shop for I think six or seven, but no, this was $5 because it was half off. It's Johnny O, which is a really strong brand. This proprietary prep formants, this prep proprietary fabric. These polo shirts do really well. 22 bucks on Poshmark, pretty good. This I got at the bins. It's an Emporio Armani women's jacket in size eight. Armani is surprisingly treacherous. Not all of it sells for all that much. I uh, got this for next to nothing, so would have been happy to flip this for even 25. This fleece is from Brixton, which is a fairly weak brand these days, unfortunately. It used to be really great, but not so good anymore. And it did sell for 30 bucks. It didn't take that long to sell, but I think I got this for around 10. I think I've mentioned a couple of times, Ivy League schools or just higher end schools, generally their apparel can do pretty well, especially if it's vintage. This is not really vintage. Weatherproof is uh, kind of a trash brand, but Vanderbilt, uh, this was a Ben's pickup. I knew someone would want it, 15 bucks. I'm skipping over a few, just showing you the highlights here. This is a NASCAR t-shirt that was in a previous haul video, flipped for 21 bucks, and it had armpit stains, I think, as you can see. Still sold, it had an iron mark there. This is G-Star and it had this glossiness on the shoulders that I think was from ironing probably or just from wear. Still flipped for 24 bucks. G-Star, really, really solid bread and butter brand. If you find it at the bins, just pick it up. If you find it retail, kind of tread carefully. It's in the manifesto. If you don't know what the manifesto is, look in the description. This is BKE. It's a plaid pearl snap shirt, solid brand. Not the best size, small, but flip for 18, pretty good. I found two pairs of shorts, the same pair from Vertex. This one was new with tags. The other one was new without tags. And this one sold for 40, which is pretty good. Kind of this tactical brand, I guess. Cargo shorts. And this is Keton. It is a, I think, Italian brand. And flipped for 45. It had a bunch of stuff wrong with it. Really, really strong brand though. Over to eBay, this is a Fred Perry shirt made with kind of a seersucker fabric. That's the uh, light colored striped cotton fabric that has a ruffled texture. Seersucker is gonna be a pretty strong keyword as we move into summer. Seersucker is most popular during the summer. Fred Perry, really good brand though. And this had some kind of flaw. I don't remember what exactly it was. Oh, it had these stains on the sleeve. These spots I didn't notice when I was screening. I still probably would have bought it had I even noticed those, just cause the brand is so good. 30 bucks, I had it listed for 45, I think, and I just took an offer for 30. Would have gotten this for seven or eight bucks. I really enjoy picking Nike pieces up at the bins. I don't pay retail prices unless it's something really special, but really predictable sellers when you can get them for like a buck or less i think it's fairly safe to pick up nike this is a skort skorts are athletic skirts that have uh compression shorts hidden underneath them and women wear them for sports like tennis got this at the bins weighed next to nothing so it was basically free 13 and a half bucks had this been vintage true vintage it would have been worth more but this was a contemporary manufacturer couple of yoga DVDs that sat around for a while before they flipped. 20 bucks. I think in a previous video I mentioned this shirt, a Patagonia shirt that I had just been sitting on forever for no apparent reason. This was it. It sold for 29 bucks. 
I don't know why it took so long to sell. Probably about a year, honestly. There's nothing wrong with it. It was a plaid flannel. The photos weren't terrible. Organic cotton and a good size. It just sat there for a long time. Sometimes that happens. As I mentioned before, don't become consumed with despair because your good item isn't selling. There's no way to force the market to behave uh, in the way that you would like it to behave. There's no way that you can force sales to happen without pulling a gun on someone. So it just comes with the territory. This is another wood background photo. So I had this forever. There's no mystery here. This is a ass brand, Buffalo David Baton. I don't like selling. I think their jeans would probably do better. I would probably pick them up at the bins if I found them. They are mimics of diesel, in my opinion. If you look at the way the tags are laid out and the aesthetics of the jeans, they're meant to look like diesels. And to the point where it actually trips me up sometimes, I'll find them and I'll think that they're diesels. So I would guess that the jeans would do better. This knit women's top took forever to sell over a year. This is a brand that I actually like finding. It's a women's brand, obviously. I've never really had much of a problem flipping it. I think I got this at the bins for, I don't know, around a buck or two, 40 bucks. Another bins pickup, it's a vintage shirt. It's made with a knit fabric. The brand was really nothing to speak of. And this is an interesting one because I have been trying to list 10 items a day, new items, and I took finally a couple days off the past two days um, because I got so tired I could barely move. So I figured that was time to take a break. And I was doing the thing where I was ending old listings and then selling similar, which allegedly triggers the same kind of algorithm magic as listing new stuff. I'm skeptical about that, but I think it's better than nothing. And um, this was an item that had gone through the full 30 day cycle and was about to end. And I ended it and sold similar and it sold right away. So I think that does work. This sold from a big fat lot of new with tags, Cherokee scrubs, among other brands that I found at a local thrift for a buck each. And I listed all of them, it took a long time to list them and they've just been slowly selling off ever since. So they don't sell that quickly, scrubs generally, unless you get really good brands like Janu or Figs. They do take a while to sell, but I think it is still worth picking scrubs up, even if they're used, if you can get them for cheap and if the brand is relatively decent, like Dickies and Cherokee and Up, and um, like more generic scrub brands that are like scrubs that aren't branded, I would say no. Uh, and there are some like, some brands worth knowing about, like Scrubs, the acronym, all capitals, S-C-R-U-B-S. Those have done pretty well for me. Disney Scrubs, I think do pretty well. Cherokee and Wonder Wink has done pretty okay. Janu and Figs are the, the really desirable ones. And anything with a really loud, gaudy pattern will probably sell more quickly. And new with tags, obviously. Another old one, I had this listed for too much. I just let this sit at a hundred bucks and no one wanted it. I dropped it down to 50 or 60, I don't remember which, and someone picked it up pretty quickly. So that's a lesson that I just keep having to relearn and relearn and relearn. Don't overprice your stuff. Parker Dussault, as you can tell, the San Francisco brand. I found a few pieces from them all in one day. This was the last of them to sell and it took the longest because it was grotesquely overpriced, but I think the brand is pretty good. Another bins pickup, 16 bucks. You know, you're not gonna make great money selling this stuff, but five bucks profit, 10 bucks profit, multiple times a day over the course of weeks and months adds up to a lot of income. Another bins brand, this is another Scort. Tranquility by Colorado. Yoga clothing, active wear clothing is gonna be selling better and better in spring and summer. So Gap, not a good brand, but floral print Henley knit, uh, knit shirt, that's a really good keyword to know. This button front pullover t-shirt, the Joe Rogan type shirt, those are called Henleys. Henleys in most brands tend to have better sell through than standard t-shirts without the buttons. And oftentimes better sell through than the full button uh, casual or certainly dress shirts, dress shirts. Another circumstance in which I will pick up bad brands like Gap and Old Navy is if they are new with tags. And I did get this at the bins, so pretty low risk. As you can tell, I get a lot from the bins these days. 
This is, I don't even know how close to being on trend this style is. I just knew, knew with tags, someone will pick it up for around the $15 mark. The $15 price point is kind of magic I am finding with clothing selling. Another pair of Nike shorts, I got these for $1. Uh, no one says all day long on reseller YouTube anymore. I will pick up Nike to flip for 15 bucks all day long. Same with this, these Levi's cargo shorts. These are almost scrub bottoms. They were made with just a, a cotton fabric. It wasn't even twill or denim or anything like that, just standard cotton. And uh, I included Y2K in the title. I'm doing that whenever possible now, whenever I feel like I can get away with it because I think that that probably drives traffic. That means, you know, the, the aughts and Y2K fashion is becoming more and more popular with young people. Interesting one, Joa Brown was a new brand to me. Uh, this is a some kind of like a lo extra long sleeve dress, tunic dress. It was one size. You don't see that all that much with women's or any kind of clothing. Uh, Flip for twenty three bucks. I think I put it, I put it up for like thirty and just accepted an offer because I had basically nothing into it. Same here, eleven and a half bucks. That's on the way low end of what I'll accept for clothing made a few bucks profit. I like these kinds of sales just to fill in the gaps between the bigger sales. Got these on an out of town trip. The brand is pretty strong, Aviator. And these are some kind of travel jeans, like anti-pickpocket jeans with zippered pockets. And here's the brand tag. And I had these up for 50 just on kind of a whim and someone picked them up for 40. I've said before that I like picking up Land's End when I can get it for bottom shelf prices because it sells fairly okay relative for an ass brand, which Land's End kind of is. It's on the level of an Eddie Bauer. Like it's never gonna be worth all that much unless it's something really, really special and or really, really vintage. But uh, just a decent bread and butter brand to just periodically sell, 20 bucks. Here's a silk Hawaiian shirt. These are gonna become more popular again as we go into summer. You can see these trends coming and people complain a lot about the summer slowdown. Start listing stuff like this now and you won't have as much problem with the slow sales as if you hadn't. Here is a CD, an audio CD or two CD set that I flipped for 35 bucks. I think I got this at a flea market, or was it a thrift store? I don't know, but it wasn't that much, 35 bucks. Sort of like the novels, video game tie-in stuff can be worth some good money. I'm skipping over a whole bunch of those trash flips, the bins, 12 to $17 flips, bunch of those. These were also a bins pickup, 31 bucks. Probably worth a little bit more than that, but again, nothing into them. So almost pure profit, Gramici. This is vintage. They do hiking and climbing clothing. You find a lot of vintage stuff. It's all really popular. I was pleased with this one. I got this at a thrift store for probably 50 cents. It's a rare two disc album from Andrew Dice Clay. And because I knew I was gonna price it up, I decided to listen to all of it all the way through to make sure that it didn't skip. I found one skip, still flipped for 60 bucks. I don't think I've ever suffered more for a sale than having to listen to two straight hours of this nonsense. This is a pretty good bolo. This is Betty Page branded and vintage Betty Page stuff, or I think just Betty Page stuff in general has pretty good sell through. Sold for 43 bucks despite having flaws, pretty decent. Got these at a flea market. Thank you very much viewers who commented that the correct keyword for these was paper bag. These are paper bag jeans, and they did sell for 19 bucks pretty quickly. I've mentioned before, RPG books are excellent to sell. Uh, this sold for 40 bucks in a lot with another one. Someone bought both for me, so I could combine shipping, and it was media mail shipping. Here's the other one that the guy bought for 50 bucks. I got a bunch of RPG books. Someone clearly donated a collection all to the same thrift store and it was uh, a dead thrift store, totally dry. Other than that, it was a complete windfall. Uh, I've made a lot of money off of those books already. So uh, if you find stuff like this, probably worth picking up and pretty easy to look up. You can scan the barcode on eBay. You can scan the barcode on Amazon. Um, just easy money.
This is a Ralph Lauren purple label that sold for $80. And I price this at 100 just as a complete Hail Mary. Every once in a while I'll do that of just let's see what happens when I think there's a plausible chance that it could work out and sometimes it does. I got an offer for, I don't know, I think there was even a little bit of haggling and they still took an 80 buck offer. So Ralph Lauren purple label, and this is vintage Ralph Lauren purple label, on the high end of value with Ralph Lauren. Ralph Lauren purple and black label are the most valuable. Ralph Ralph Lauren RRL, which I showed off in the last haul video, also exceptionally valuable and vintage. There are all kinds of little niche in Ralph Lauren that are worth more than standard. This is a fishing shirt. So remember I was saying I have these criteria for what counts as a fishing shirt. This is a button up shirt. It's made with nylon fabric and it's vented. And also Triton is a fishing bass boat brand. So, you know, that was the dead giveaway. I still would have marketed this as a fishing shirt because of the cargo pockets, this, this caped venting on the back. Um, and the fact that it was made with like a lightweight synthetic fabric, even without the embroidered Triton Boats logo, and despite being a bad brand and it had those hidden buttons on the collar. Um, but I knew that this would sell because Triton. So 24 bucks. Land's End, again, vintage corduroy blazer, Ben's pickup, nothing into it. Would not have spent more than a couple bucks on this, but 32 bucks, pretty decent. Another illustration of the college thing. This is just a toddler's dress. It sold for almost 12 bucks. Again, got it at the bins, so pure profit there. And it weighed next to nothing, so shipping was rock bottom. It's a good bolo. Mother is a women's brand. They make jeans and pants, and this sold for 35, despite slash possibly because of the paint splattering. Ended up having to refund the person because there was some issue with the condition that I didn't notice when I was screening them but still a really strong bolo. And uh, like I said, there were a bunch of other flips, but probably not super interesting viewing. So I hope that helps. Thanks for watching.